So here we are at the mausoleum resting place of one Euphemia Robinson Erskine, wife of William Erskine, or Lord Canada, whose name and legacy live on uh, in the village to this day via Upper Canada, Lower Canada, and Canada Park. Now we don't know if Lord Erskine's actually buried here. Uh, we have no documentary evidence for that. But what we do know is that Lord Canada was friends with Sir Walter Scott, the poet, novelist, and antiquarian. And that Lord, Lord Canada was known to have helped uh, supply uh, historical and topographical details to Sir Walter with regards to a, a series of successful poems, starting with The Lay of the Last Minstrel in 1805 and ending in 1813 with The Bride of Theoman. Now, in 1814, Walter went on to uh, publish the novel Waverley. Uh, and we'll take a closer look here, folks. So, here we are inside the mausoleum. And I'd just like to say a few words on the importance of Sir Walter's uh, Waverley novel in terms of Scottish culture and uh, the way we perceive Scotland around the world and indeed with ourselves. When Sir Walter published uh, uh, the Waverley novel, it was uh, anonymous as he didn't want it to get in the way of his poetry work. But it came on to be a great success and therefore he added his name to it. Now it's known that Prince Albert uh, of Prince Albert and Victoria fame read the novel and indeed it was one of his favourite novels and it was the last novel that he was known to have read. And because of reading it, they came up to Scotland, this was in 1852, and bought Balmoral Castle. And upon doing that, they reignited the whole Scottish clans, Tartan, the wearing of Tartan and the Highland Games. So very much, you know, uh, the... Um, impact on uh, the, the Scottish tourism industry alone, let alone as how we perceive ourselves as being a nation, can't be understated. Uh, and what's fantastic for somebody like me, somebody who loves both history and literature, is to think that the great man actually uh, stood here within these walls at one time and we have a very, um, we have our very own connection in Salon to Sir Walter in that he wrote the poem for Euphemia, and if you bear with me, I'll read the poem. So here we are. Uh, unfortunately, my camera can't pick up the uh, the words very clearly. So what I'll do is I'll post up a, a image of it that you may read it yourself. But it reads: Plain as her native dignity of mind, arise the tomb of her we have resigned. Unflawed and stainless to the marble cross, emblem of lovely form and candid soul. But oh, what symbol may avail to tell the kindness, wit and sense we love so well? What sculptures show the broken ties of life, here buried with the parent, friend and wife? Or on the tablet stamp is title dear, by which thine urn, Euphemia, claims the tear? Yet taught by thy meek sufferance to assume patience in anguish, hope beyond the tomb. Resigned, though sad, this votive verse shall flow, and brief, alas, as thy brief span below. And it's by Sir Walter Scott. Um, so, in many ways, as I say, folks, this is our very unique uh, link with Sir Walter Scott and the village of Salem. So if you've got any questions, any theories, thoughts, please post them in the usual places below. And again, this was on behalf of the Salon and District Heritage Society. Thank you so much for listening again, folks, and we'll see you soon. Okay, thank you very much, folks.